Denise, are you ready to open? <laughs> and she the disappeared. Denise has disappeared. This is not a good thing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to admit all. Okay. And do the welcome. Welcome everybody. We're doing gray water today from laundry to landscape with master gardener Stephanie Keister Campbell. And we are going to give people about two minutes to arrive. Alrighty, I think it is a good time to start. Welcome to the class. We are going to be talking for an hour and then we're going to have 30 minutes for questions. If you think of a question in the middle of the presentation, just go ahead and put it in the chat and we will keep track of it and try, try to deduplicate those. And in the last half hour, Stephanie's going to answer questions. Next slide, please. I'm trying. There we go. <laughs> All right. First, a little Zoom housekeeping. Um, we ask that you keep your microphone muted and your video off. That's for bandwidth purposes. And uh, you'll be best off if you use speaker view, which is in the upper right hand corner of your Zoom window. And the chat window is a good thing to open up. That's down in the controls at the bottom um, where you can ask those questions and we'll answer at the end. There's a CC live transcript is what it says on a button also at the bottom of your screen and that will turn on closed captioning. So if you're not catching all the words with your ears, you can see them go by on the screen. Uh, for technical assistance, we um, ask you to ping. Uh, can you go back a slide? <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie. Denise sure, Pinard, no. who has temporarily dropped off the um, off the, the meeting. So she'll be back soon, I'm sure. And if she's not, you can you can talk to me, Denise Delise Weir. And after class, I want everybody to know we're going to send this presentation out. We're going to send a link to the video out. Any resources that are in the presentation you'll have access to. So thank you all for coming and next slide. And just a little bit about who we are. We are the Master Gardener Program of Monterey and Santa Cruz counties. Uh, we teach home gardeners um, how to garden sustainably and responsibly. We're associated with the UC ANR um, Natural Resources Organization that's also um, uh, farm advisors. So um, we are your, we are your you ground floor uh, access to, oh. to um, uh, you can always advise for your garden. And now I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie, who's going to tell you a little bit about herself. Hi, good morning. I'm Stephanie Kister Campbell, and um, I am your instructor today. I am a conservation analyst at the Water Management District um, here where I live, which is Monterey Peninsula. I live in Seaside myself. I've been there for 13 years. Uh, so I have a little experience to share with you today. And I've been a master gardener since uh, 2020 is when I joined um, the class. So thank you for being here. Again, we are covering gray water, laundry to landscape today. And here's a pretty little graphic I found of, of what we're gonna be doing. 
Uh, so let's start with a summary of what we're going to accomplish today. So I'm going to let you know what gray water is exactly, uh, why we're training you on a laundry and a landscape system as opposed to some other gray water system. We're going to make sure we keep it code compliant. So you'll see all the steps needed to do that. This is a do it yourself step by step level class. So you will see all of the details of how to build it yourself and where to find uh, the resources to do that. And then if you find it's a little too much for you, um, you can hire somebody. And so we'll have resources uh, for that as well. All right, so let's start with indoor water use. So this is where your water generally is being used in your home. And obviously this translates to wastewater of some kind. So we have the toilet as the top um, user here, uh, followed by clothes washer at 20, about 22%, the shower, faucet, and hopefully you don't have this much leaks going on at your house, but um, that occurs as well. So this water is all exiting our property in one form or another. And we classify those uh, wastewaters as either gray water or black water. So gray water is defined as the water that comes from your bathroom sink, your shower, your bathtub, and your washing machine. So this is kind of dirty water, right? And then black water is uh, really dirty water and that's from dishwashers, kitchen sinks, and toilets. So they are classified different um, based on their source. And then um, that further tells us what we can do uh, with uh, said water. <clears throat> so gray water use is regulated. Um, it's, in, it's regulated by state law. It's uh, defined in the plumbing code and the health department or your local building department uh, enforces these codes. So uh, a quick overview of what you can do with it, your raw gray water, right as it comes out of you know, the, the fixture can be used to irrigate plants outdoors. And then you can take gray water and treat it uh, with filters and disinfectant to plumb, to bring inside, to flush toilets and wash clothes. So there's lots of ways to, to reuse gray water. Um, and we'll just be talking about one of those types today. So I was talking about the code already and um, that really you know, brings us to permit requirements. And um, you know, a lot of people not, don't necessarily wanna get a water permit or get a permit for, for this type of system. So um, I wanna let you know what kind of things, if you were thinking about adding these to your system might get you into needing a permit. So if you took your gray water and you wanted to pump it or store it, um, if you wanted to filter it, put it in a tank, you're gonna be building a type of system that requires a permit. So I want you to be aware of that, um, you know, before you even uh, imagine what your system's gonna be um, beyond what we're learning about today. Um, so that's why we're talking about laundry to landscape. One reason is because if you follow all of um, the procedures I'm gonna give you, you don't need a permit for it. So there's this um, called literally laundry to landscape in the plumbing code. And um, if you follow these steps, if you don't pump the water, if you don't use a tank, if you don't filter it, and you use gravity to move your water, uh, and as well, you don't modify your plumbing in your house, then you don't need a permit. So it's really keeps the cost down on this system and makes it more accessible. So again, why are we choosing the laundry to landscape system? Well, 50% of uh, our household water use, our drinking water in California, we use it to outside to water our plants. So um, as you know, we're back in a drought, unfortunately. So that's a lot of water that, um, you know, may not be considered uh, necessary water use, right? Uh, but we wanna keep our, our plants. So um, we have gray water coming out of our washing machine, which is 20% of our water use. So that's an easy access um, source of water that we can reuse. As I already mentioned, you know, no permits needed for this system. So that's really attractive. Uh, reusing gray water can reduce our summer irrigation demand. 
It can relieve stress on our septic systems. Um, for drought, you know, if we want to cut back, say the governor says we need to cut back 30%, you can say, well, I got my gray water, I can still keep, you know, some plants alive um, and whatnot. And of course, lowering your, lowering your water bill is always attractive. Okay, so this is um, a sketch of the type of system we're going to be um, building or learning how to build. So you'll notice we have our washing machine and um, it's connecting to this plumbing system that we're creating to bring the water set up to our sewer to bring it outside of our house. It includes uh, piping to distribute the water uh, out to our plants. And then it includes a delivery method, which is called a mulch basin, which we'll be talking about. So before we get too far into it, another stress point here, um, all of these components are required to not um, need a permit or to do gray water appropriately. So we're not gonna skip you know, this distribution piping, we're not gonna skip the mulch basin because we cannot um, touch this water, we cannot spray this water, we cannot be carrying this water in a bucket. So, um, the delivery method is part of the system. So um, just keep that in mind. If you are doing any of this, you are violating um, the plumbing code. Again, so we're going to, to be code compliant. We're gonna have a three-way valve. We're gonna keep gray water on our property. We're gonna use it outside. We're gonna release it under cover we're going to minimize contact with it. We're going to create a, a manual so that we know what we built as well as um, anyone that we may sell the house to, rent the house to, have guests. And what we're not going to do is we're not going to connect to potable water. In order to not need a permit, we're not going to do any structural or plumbing um, changes to our what's in our house. Um, we're not going to create any ponding of this water. We're going to be sure not to use hazardous chemicals in our wash loads that we're sending to our plants. Uh, we're not going to put this on top of our irrigation, uh, excuse me, leach field or septic tank. And we're certainly not going to let this water be within 100 feet of waterways. Okay, so this system all starts with our washing machine. So let's be sure we're ready to use it for uh, to get our gray water. Of course, we gotta start thinking about how much water we're really gonna get and utilize. And there'll be more slides on this as well, but you know, the average is 20% of water use is gonna be um, from your washing machine, but you gotta think about how many people you have in your house, how many loads you're doing per week, uh, and how many gallons your machine uses. So here we have a reference chart you can kind of get an idea from, but you'll really need to uh, figure out for yourself how much water you are uh, getting out of your machine. So this all starts with the washing machine. And um, the system is utilizing the pump from your washing machine like it normally does to pump water out of the machine into your sewer, that same pump is pumping the water into our gray water system. There's no additional pumps being used in this system. So in order for it all to work and you to not blow out your washing machine pump, which is not, not the intention here, you're gonna use your gray water in a flat yard and you're gonna uh, have the water exit your system within 50 feet. So if you say, oh man, my backyard is all uphill <clears throat> then you already are not a candidate for, for this system. So again, flat yard within 50 feet is what we're going to um, irrigate. And um, we're gonna leave a one inch pipe open at the end so that the water, no matter what, we have clogs, um, the water will exit and we won't have an issue backing up into our machine. So to get started, we want our, our machine to be in the best working order we can. So what we want to do is to clean out the filter pump. 
uh, and make sure that there's uh, nothing nothing in there. And this will help just make sure that the pump's gonna be working most efficiently uh, going forward. So we're getting our machine ready to uh, irrigate plants. So we gotta think about what kind of soaps and products we're using. So you're gonna get rid of products that have lots of salt, boron, um, chloron bleach, chlorine bleach, excuse me. Um, and if you have a water softener, um, if, if you have a potassium chloride water softener, that's fine, but not a sodium based. Uh, of course, you can do, you know, bleach loads, but you're going to be sending that water to the sewer, not to your plants. Here are some products that are going to work for you. So we have some names here and um, uh, a link to look up, uh, you know, places to buy these. There's, there's some available at Costco, uh, Trader Joe's, uh, et cetera. Okay, so we got our washing machine ready. And now we got to build the avenue for uh, the water to leave the house and go outside. So here we go. Okay, so the components that we're seeing, and we'll go more and more in detail on these, is uh, the three way valve. And this is connecting our normal washing machine drain pipe. Instead of going into the sewer connection like normal, it's going into a three-way valve where we can turn this valve and decide whether we want the water to go to the sewer or go out to our landscape. We have a vent here. So this is anti-siphon. So this prevents a siphoning from happening here, which would suck water out of the machine when it's running, which would not be what we want. And then we're using one inch pipe for this. And this is to minimize friction and make sure that we're not going to get any kind of clogging uh, that we might get by using a smaller size pipe. So we are building a system with PVC here. So this is a little touch brush up on how to cut and glue PVC pipe. So you're going to use PVC cutters or a handsaw is fine. Uh, be sure to calculate the length of the pipe that will slip into the fitting. That is an extra length that you need to account for. Uh, try and use as few fittings as possible so that there's less friction. And then when you're gluing it, uh, Gorilla Glue PVC is a, a good one. Make sure your pipe is clean and dry. You're going to apply the glue to the fitting first and then to the pipe. And when you push your pipe together, you need to hold it for a few seconds uh, to secure uh, the glue. Uh, otherwise the pipe will push itself back out of the fitting. Okay. All right, so these are the parts and pieces that go into our three-way valve. And we got a little um, identifier of what these are. So we have our three-way valve and then um, they're connected to the one inch pipe via this uh, PVC adapter. We have some bracketing that we're gonna use to secure this to the wall when we're done. And then we have the barb fitting um, to connect to our washing machine hose. So this, the washing machine hose would slip over this barb fitting and we would secure it with a hose clamp. Every house is different. So we have different angles and spaces to work with. So we're gonna uh, take a look at that and um, use our creativity to find out what fittings we need and what angles we're gonna use. So here's some pictures of different configurations. All you have to be sure of is that your valve, the three-way valve here is higher than the flood rim of your washing machine. Uh, then we need to make sure we connect the hose to the middle port of the three-way valve and use Teflon tape on all of our uh, threads to be sure we have watertight connections because this is plumbing and we, we don't want any leaks in our house. Here's another example. So you might have uh, utilized different materials to take sharp, sharp angles. So in this case, we have a uh, interesting angle we need to get our water down through. So this person used a washing machine hose uh, to make that connection. Uh, 
So to uh, build our anti-siphon, um, again, we're gonna have different locations depending on our, our space allowances. But again, this is what's gonna keep water from being sucked out of our washing machine when we don't want it to. So it's a necessary component. It needs to be at the highest point of our system. So it's always gonna be the tallest thing sticking out of this. And it needs to be visible uh, in case of leaks. Cause if it's, God forbid you had all your outlets blocked, this would be the first place water could back up into and enter into your house. So we can't hide this in the wall. Unfortunately, we wanna have it accessible. This is how we're gonna build our anti-siphon. So the auto vent is uh, what you would, what it's called at Home Depot or whatever. Um, and it's one and a half uh, inches. So we gotta reduce it down with these couplings and bushings down to our one inch pipe. So these are the items you'd be looking for at the store. And then we have our one inch T to get back to our uh, one inch PVC pipe that we're using. Uh, again, we just have more photos of possible uh, designs. So again, we have it at the high point in our system. Um, in this case, outdoors, indoors, uh, but they're always visible and accessible. More photos of tight spaces and how you can make this work. Um, again, you can take your auto vent outside. This obviously is a very tight closet that their washing machine is in. So um, there are ways to accommodate um, all sorts of spaces. As we get this finished up, we need to strap our plumbing that we created because we know we have that rattling that tends to happen when washing machines are spinning. So we want to secure this plumbing. You can use straps and you may need to have a block behind the plumbing just um, <coughs> if it's setting away from the wall at all to secure it too. Of course, for our own self and for the code, we need to label our system for what we've just built. So we're gonna label the pipe, you know, gray water, do not drink, non potable water. And we're gonna create a little labeling so that we know which way to send the water for sewer versus which way to send it to our irrigation system and post it. So this pipe has to exit our house at some point uh, through the wall, through the floor. Um, so we're gonna figure out where that location is gonna be and then look for potential issues that we of course want to avoid. We don't wanna hit any electrical or gas or other plumbing. So you can start with drilling a pilot hole, and take a look in the, in the space. And if you're good to go, then you're gonna drill, uh, get your hole saw and um, drill um, a one and a half inch size hole that your one inch pipe will fit through. And it's best to drill from the outside in so that the hole is the cleanest looking it can be. And make sure you get a bit that's appropriate for your surface. So uh, wood, stucco, uh, whatever it may be. When you're done, you want to uh, fill that hole that we made with uh, some sealant <clears throat> to prevent bugs, as well as paint the PVC so that uh, it's not going to be degraded by UV. Okay, so we got our water um, out of our house. So um, what plants are we going to water here? We want to think about, again, back to how many gallons of gray water we're getting out of the machine. Uh, and then think about how much water the plants that we have or are going to put in need, right? And find a balance between those two. Uh, one option, if you already have an in-ground irrigation system, is to figure out um, maybe a zone that you can just adapt to gray water um, and connect this system into um, to take that off potable water. So again, we gotta estimate the gray water production. So how many loads are we doing? 
how many gallon, um, how many loads, how many gallons, and how often are we doing laundry, right? Uh, and then keep in mind, like, what if you're planning on getting a new washing machine soon that has a different, you know, gallonage or whatnot, or maybe you're planning on changing your landscape. So keep all that in mind as um, we start this planning. So to give you an idea, um, we want to water plants with large root zones um, and we can't spray it. So um, we don't want to water lawns, no reason to water drought tolerant plants that don't need water. Small plants are difficult to irrigate. Uh, and then, you know, any, any sensitive plant that, um, you know, may not like the soap that we're using, you just, you know, why, why try? So instead we're gonna water things that are gonna work well for us, which are trees, fruit trees are good, uh, larger plants, shrubs and bushes, vines, perennials, uh, and large annuals. Uh, just to be aware, the gray water cannot touch edible portions of plants. So no root crops can be watered with gray water. So one criteria uh, is rule of thumbs, you know, again, closest area to the washing machine that is not uphill, it's going to be best for this. Larger plants, this is a rule of thumb as well. Top loading machines use more water. So 12 outlets means more plants, more water, more plants. A front loading machine uses less water. So we're going to have a few less plants um, than we can water. Again, look for plants with large root zones. So there is a lot of math that goes into calculating um, plant water requirements. And so you can do that work to get a scientific answer on this. So basically um, the calculation gives you the estimated water use or water needs of your plant. So it takes into account <clears throat> evapotranspiration, which is um, specific to your location, uh, how big the plant is, and then what the plant is. So that's the, the plant factor. So whether it's a low water use plant, medium water use plant, high water use plant. And then you come up with a gallonage of how much water that plant needs. So uh, there's more on this in the appendix. Um, it does take a little time to go through, but it's it's worth the effort to make sure that you're not over irrigating or under irrigating your plants. And then this applies for gray water or any irrigation to make sure you're applying the right amount of water. <clears throat> Again, um, so you'll basically are, are, are trying to match how much water you're, you're uh, getting and match it to the plants and how much water they need. So see the appendix for more information. Okay, so here we have a backyard and um, we're gonna point out, you know, what would be appropriate for gray water and what would not. So um, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but we have larger trees and bushes along this back fence. So this would be appropriate. Potentially these trees here um, these along this other fence are really close to this fence line, so we may be too close to our neighbor to irrigate those. The lawn is not appropriate. These smaller shrubs um, are probably not so great for it. And you'll see why when we build the uh, mulch basin later. But again, we have a tree here, so that would be great places to use, use our gray water. So now we figured out <clears throat> what plants, hopefully, we want to water. And so we got to connect our house gray water piping that we made, and we got to get it distributed to our plants, right? So as we leave our house, we're going to have some obstacles. Um, we got to go <clears throat> out of our house, you know, along siding, uh, patios sheds, whatnot. So um, do consider that this pipe may be visible and um, uh, route it in a way that, that works. There are probably walkways, driveways, uh, pathways that need to be 
gone around. So you can go under it, you can go around it, um, you can remove sections here. You know, there's a little decorative um, thing here, we pour. Uh, so you will have to plan for that. <clears throat> Another reminder um, on where we can put these things and what the code says about location. So we need to be, um, and excuse me, this, this is actually related to where the, the water is delivered. So where the plants are located. So two feet from buildings, one and a half feet from property lines, 100 feet from wells or creeks, five feet from septic, four feet from a leach field, and three feet above ground table, uh, groundwater table. So we got this pipe and we're still using one inch pipe here. This is uh, landscape piping. And um, <clears throat> most often we're gonna bury it. So we're gonna make a trench and run it through. Uh, you can leave it on surface, but we want to keep this out of the sun. So you might put it behind some bushes or whatnot. But again, we're going to start laying out our one inch pipe and start getting it to our plants. Here's an image of some of uh, this pipe going in. So we have, we've got to start branching off and um, going different directions to get to our plant locations in the yard. Again, we're keeping it out of the sunlight use stakes to hold it down. When you have a downward slope, uh, you can use a uh, serpentining of your pipe and this will help slow the flow of the water and keep it from um, distributing unevenly. And you'll wanna put your outlets on the upper side of the plant. Um, this will help with gravity uh, so that it will flow down and um, distribute uh, more evenly. All right, so as we get closer to our plants, we're going to go from one inch tubing down to half inch tubing as you need. And um, <coughs> you'll use these, uh, you know, half inch um, fittings to just go down to your half inch piping. If you have a lot of gray water, and you want to have different zones, you certainly could do that. So you would put a three-way valve or a ball valve out there and you would physically go out and change this valve to a different direction in order to divert the water from one area of your yard to another. So that's something to think about. Okay, so we got the water from our machine, we got the piping out, and now we're ready to let it loose in our plants. So we're gonna build mulch basins. Okay, so what is a mulch basin? Well, as we said, the code says you have to discharge under two inch shield. So, cause we're not, we don't wanna be touching this water, cannot be ponded, so, um, we're creating a basin to fill with our gray water. <clears throat> it gets filled with mulch, and this is our sponge. The mulch actually only takes up about 20% of the volume, um, leaving 80% for water. So what happens is um, your pipe is coming out of the ground here and it's going into this mulch. So, but it has to be under shield, so we use you know, a lot of people just use an upside down uh, pot for this <coughs> to, you know, recycle. Um, and so it's exiting into this uh, pot and is covered um, to again, prevent um, touching or ponding or, uh, you know, um, all right, so here we have, um, a larger, we got a tree, so you can see they built or dug the, the basin here um, where it will be filled with mulch. Um, so it's gonna depend, the size that you dig it will be based on your soil type. So you'll want to see if you have sandy soil, which would mean you need a smaller basin. Um, if you have clay soil, you might need a larger one because absorption is not going to be as fast. 
we're going to use large chunky uh, wood chips or mulch that'll last longer and um, do what we're, we're looking for. This will also be dug in the drip line of the plant. Obviously, we don't want it to be cutting the root zone. We just want it, the water to be right there at the edge. So it's going to saturate the soil next to it. Uh, these do need to be redug and moved as your, your tree gets much bigger because again, it always wants to be at the drip line. So as this grows, it will need, the mulch basin will need to be moved further away. For our mulch shields, you can use um, a standard valve box, or again, like I said, um, recycle uh, a pot and invert it. Drill a little hole here for our tubing to go in. We cut the top as a flap so that we can open it like a lid, just like this. So here's another cross section. So what happens here is the pipe needs to um, come out in our pot and the water needs to free fall through air about four inches. And this is to prevent bugs and other things from going in our open pipe end. All right, then we have our two inch cover above it to uh, follow the code. Um, and then this top piece is like a stone paver or what have you to mark the, the spot because you know our ugly bucket, we don't want to see that. So we might cover it with a rock or stone to make it look pretty. So the mulch basin or combination of all your mulch basins on this zone need to capture the gray water that comes out of your machine. So <clears throat> the volume of, of it needs to be big enough to catch all that water. Cause again, we don't want rough ponding, we don't want runoff. So the water has got to fit in this space. So you're going to need to do some volume calculations um, to see if the volume of this pit basically is enough to hold your water. So again, that's another uh, long math problem we're going to um, leave for another day, but the information is in the appendix on how to calculate volume. So if we weren't clear already, we just have some more images here of what this exactly looks like. So we have our turned over pot, we have our pipe that was buried and exiting here. Yeah, there's nothing, there, well, there's four inches of space underneath it for the water to free fall. Um, and here we have another image of that. So the pipe doesn't need to bury, be buried, but the outlet does. So here we have this image where the pipe is up and, um, but the outlet is in fact covered at the end. So to avoid clogs, that's why we have this uh, one inch or you can go down a half inch, but we have this open, fairly large tubing that we're using to avoid clogs. Cause remember there's no filtration on this entire system. So um, that's why we're not using drip emitters or any other, um, you know, smaller orifice to do this. Uh, so, but you can use ball valves to get, and that's this one on the right, um, to reduce the flow, whatnot, uh, somewhat to get um, the right flow rate um, to our particular plant. So point of clarification, use weekly gray water production to decide how many plants to water, but use maximum daily flow to determine the size of the mulch basins. And again, this is to make sure your water is gonna fit in those mulch basins so that uh, we don't have ponding and we don't have you know, overflow basically. So now that we built this system, we need to test it and make sure it's perfect. So uh, at the point where the PVC transitions to the irrigation hose, we're gonna just um, put in a female hose thread by barbed, and this will help us get our hose, our normal backyard hose connected. So we're gonna crank that on and uh, run the system as, you know, basically try and um, imitate the washing machine water and run it and see, you know, did, did it do what we thought it was gonna do? So you'll start seeing how the water is exiting in these, these pipes, right? And you might find that it needs balancing. So just very, you know, uh, basic things. You can just adjust the angle of the T here. So 
you know, if you uh, crank it up a little bit, put a little rock under it, that's going to slow the flow out of this pipe or angle it down to get a little bit more out of this, out of this one, right? Or you can use a ball valve. Again, you minimize this because these are going to be a clogging point, but these, you know, close down the orifice or open it more to um, get your flow to the right amount. So once you have it all balanced and ready to go, you can bury your system and um, start making your yard look pretty again after you've torn it up. So uh, we have our mulch basins here, and then we've hidden our uh, pots with you know pretty rocks or papers or a statue. Of course, that's all up to you how you want to make it look, but um, this can look attractive and um, uh, in your yard. Here's another example. So this is, um, we have a little outlet, uh, obviously not code compliant yet, but this is, we have, we have outlets here and then um, we've hidden it beneath the short soil shield and a rock to make this uh, code compliant. Okay, so just a reminder of all the steps we wanna take to make sure that we did this right. So we're gonna bury our tubing after we test the system. Make sure we check for leaks inside the house, right? Uh, paint any exposed PVC and fill any holes so we don't have bugs and whatnot. We're gonna post a sign that says, we're not gonna drink this water and um, give directions on our three-way valve. We'll make a maintenance manual to uh, remind ourselves, um, you know, uh, because we do need to replace the mulch because it will break down. So every one to two years, you're gonna do that. So maybe you have a schedule in there. Um, make sure you're stocked up on your new soap that you're gonna use, and then you're ready to go. So there is maintenance, as I just mentioned, gotta replace the mulch every one to two years, check for clogs. Uh, and unless we have a dry winter like last year, you're gonna be turning the system off in the winter because we don't want to give the plants too much water. So it's just gonna get, this is gonna get turned off and directed to the sewer during rainy months. Again, just as a reminder from our, our code and, and what we're doing with this particular system to not need a permit. So we took water from our washing machine only. We used one inch piping down to half inch in the yard. We made sure we had an anti-siphon so that we don't suck water out of our washing machine. We did not store any of this gray water. We used large bulky uh, mulch in our basins. Um, we always, I, I may not have mentioned this before, you always leave the end of the tube. So the furthest, um, you know, plant from your house, you're gonna leave an open end of one inch. So, and this is just to, you know, prevent leaks in your house um, and keep your pump and your machine happy. So you always have that one inch open end. So worst case scenario, the water's got somewhere to go uh, no matter what. And we didn't use an additional pump. And that's how we stayed in a, um, you know, a non, a permit, a system that does not need a permit. Um, and is in fact a laundry to landscape system. So when you go shopping, here are some locations to buy materials. Um, and I can Google these locations. So keep in mind, um, there are rebates available commonly for these types of systems. Uh, they range anywhere from 100 to $400 in rebates. Um, in that amount, uh, you know, I would say materials alone for this is, you know, about two to three hundred dollars. So, you know, they cover fifty percent to one hundred percent of the materials. Uh, of course, um, if you hire someone, it doesn't that does not cover um, their time. So, if you don't want to do this yourself, we do have a list of installers. Um, well, we don't, but it's the um, Central Coast Gray Water Alliance. They have a directory of um, people that do these types of systems. And um, some further directories are, you know, more localized 
uh, are here as well for you. And this this slide will, um, well, all the slides will be sent to you after the presentation so you can uh, find these folks. And that concludes um, my presentation. So if we have any questions, um, now's the time. Hey, Stephanie, we have gotten a few questions. So let me feed those to you. Um, in the very beginning of the presentation, there was a question about the statistic you used for water usage. And um, this person was indicating that was probably from before 1999 and didn't include high efficiency washers. Um, can you comment on that? Yeah, so that is uh, an estimate on water use. Obviously, we have all sorts of washing machines. Um, unfortunately, you know, we at my office, we do inspections of people's homes and the number of times we see 30 year old washing machines that use 30 gallons is very common. Those older machines last forever. Whereas these <laughs> new, the new high efficiency, we get a lot of complaints. They only last, you know, eight to 10 years. So there's um, all sorts of machines out there. And that's why we covered multiple slides on calculating how much water is coming out of your machine, right? You may have a super high efficiency. You may have a, an old machine that uses a lot of water. And I think you've already answered this in your lecture, but when you refer to outlets on number of plants, um, are you referring to emitters? Yes. So you can imagine, um, just like if you were designing a regular irrigation system, if you have a larger plant, you might have multiple emitters, right? So if you have a tree, you might put, um, you might have three, um, or um, you might have two. So uh, yes, so it's the number of emitters, not the number of plants. Um, someone would like to know why not raised beds? This is a fundamental question that I think needs to be reinforced. Yeah, so uh, we are doing, our system is going on flat ground. So if you were to do a raised bed, you would no longer be on flat ground and you would be having, asking your pump to pump up into your raised bed. So that's the problem, it's the, it's the height. So um, you don't wanna go up, right? You don't wanna go uphill and you don't wanna go up into a raised bed. So that's the problem with it. And raised beds are often vegetables as well. True, yeah, so um, exactly. Like we mentioned, you can't do, you can't water the edible portion of the food crop. Um, so you can use it to grow edibles, but not in a raised bed because of the height issue and not um, the edible portion has to be above the soil surface. And does that include lettuce? That, that sort of isn't under- Lettuces would not be appropriate. Okay. So early on, we had somebody ask, how do you figure out your groundwater table? And someone else replied, look on your county GIS system. Do you agree, is that the best way? Um, I would Google it. So that sounds, that sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you replace the mulch, do you dig out the old mulch and relocate it? You don't have to, you could um, kind of mix it in, but uh, really just applying more on top would be fine. Okay, so you're doing concentric rings of, of mulch basins kind of. Yeah. Okay, doke. Um, well, we're on the last uh, question so far. And this is an interesting question. So she is wondering if, um, I think it's a she, it could be a he, um, a single person doing laundry every seven to 10 days has a drought tolerant landscape. Is that a scenario that's appropriate for the investment of time and energy that this would take? Um, who are the I right would... people to, to do groundwater? What, what do their yards look like is kind of my takeaway. Okay, so a single person with a drought tolerant landscape, no, there's no reason to do this. Um, number one, drought tolerant plants, um, you know, obviously there's all sorts of, of species, but they may not want that heavy load of water. 
So, um, you know, it could be damaging to a drought tolerant landscape to add excess water, um, you know, for basically no reason. So no, I, I wouldn't do it for that. Um, I, I feel like this is best for people that want to have higher water needing plants in their landscape without um, using uh, potable water for it. So uh, if you wanna have the fruit tree and, um, you know, or say um, some other higher water use plant, uh, you can justify that, you know, it's kind of my thought on it by using gray water and um, your bill won't be affected. Okie doke. So we have an, a new question. Um, your slides are showing the pipes going in some places and, and going underground and then surfacing. Does that mean it's going uphill? What, what can you clarify that? Well, we have a, uh, all the slides are showing all sorts of different installations at various properties. So, um, but no, you're, I mean, a subtle, um, you know, inches wise in your piping going up or down uh, is not a problem. It, it's your general trajectory is, is flat. So um, if you have a, a small, you know, very small, you know, six inch little raised section in your yard for some reason, that's not a problem. But, um, you know, when you start talking feet, then we're, we're, we're not, we're not gonna be in, in the best setup. So um, the pipe in general is flat in the yard. Okay. And someone wants to know why not lawns and ground cover? They're not edible. Well, the problem is um, digging a mulch basin that would water said uh, item. So how would you build a mulch basin to water a lawn? It's really not possible, um, at least with my understanding. So if you had a mulch basin, it would have to be on the edge of a lawn and only would water a foot of your lawn. So it's just, it doesn't work for the root zone of a lawn. Makes sense. And you would have to spray it, correct? To right. make it work for a lawn. And there's spraying is not a permit. Enough. Exactly. Okie dokie. I was listening. Um, so here, I'm gonna read this directly because I'm not sure what she's asking. Um, could you explain the flow control of a three-way valve? Does the handle direction indicate, uh, especially on the north, what does the handle direction indicate on the north-south directions? Okay, so um, usually the handle direction aligns uh, with the direction of the flow. So it's not a flow restrictor in any way, it just diverts the flow. But when you buy the valve, it will say, you know, which, which handle position goes in which direction. And then when you install it, you'll, you'll have that in your mind to know one direction goes to the sewer, one direction is going to your landscape, and then you'll label it as such. Thank you. All right, we have somebody who's interested in rainwater harvesting. They're looking for a presentation and they're having a hard time finding design and installation resources in Morgan Hill. Do you have any idea who, who does that kind of work? Well, you can go to uh, montereywaterinfo.org and um, watch the presentation we did, the water district hosted on rainwater harvesting in, uh, this spring. And um, it's under resource, conservation resources outdoors. Um, so you can watch that. It's about a one hour presentation similar to this. And then as far as um, installers, um, the instructor of that class, he it's close enough. He may work out there, I'm not sure. Um, but he also may have some referrals for you as well. But there are more rainwater harvest harvesting installers than there are gray water. So again, um, a quick Google search for installers in Morgan Hill, I'm sure you'll find somebody. Okay, and can you tell us that URL again? Montereyinfo.org? Montereywaterinfo.org. Okay, put that in the chat. Perfect. And we actually have a master gardener who has expertise in this area, and we're talking to him about possibly doing a class. Good. It'd be fun. All right, you're getting um, a, an avalanche of kudos for your fantastic class. 
Uh, last call for questions. If anybody has a question, now's the time. Okay. I think we are good. Um, could you show us some of the re resources and reference slides that you didn't get to? Um, I'm not sure that I can, only due to my technical uh -oh. situation. Um, so if you, you go forward, the appendix is not coming up. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant these resources. Yes. So we, oh, you're right. We have other slides to cover. And we do have some more slides to talk to. So <laughs> I am going to put in the chat, um, we like to continually improve. <clears throat> we all like to do that, I think. Um, and so every class has a little evaluation survey. So if you don't mind right now, while you're thinking about it, um, I just put a link in the chat. Uh, there's a quick and easy five minute survey to, um, find out how we're doing and what other classes you'd like to see us offer. And um, we want to let you know that within a month or two, you will get an email survey from the California Master Gardener program. And um, they will ask you if you have used the information that you learned on this class. We use that money, they use that money to fund the entire program. So it's, it's an impact metric, it's important. If you can possibly answer it and find the time to do that, it's in another really short survey that will come um, from our parent organization. Classes we have coming soon, right around the corner, integrated pest management. This would be invertebrates. So summer pests that fly, creep, and crawl. It's also gonna include snails and earwigs and such. And then um, in, on 727, California native seed plant collecting. That will be a free virtual class also. And um, it's a really fascinating, fascinating topic. The instructor is a master gardener who is working with the um, Amamutsun tribal group to collect and propagate native plants um, and reinstate them in the, in the community. So um, that's a wonderful thing. And I highly recommend it. And then our plant sale is coming in October. So look for that. And we are also in the process of accepting applications for master gardener training. So if you want to be one of the master gardeners and learn all kinds of things and meet amazing people and do really important work in the world, become a master gardener. Next, please. And then if you really truly have a plant problem you cannot solve or figure out, um, uh, please contact the hotline. It's a online uh, question forum and we have master gardeners um, answering questions give us a few days if you submit one um, we're all an all volunteer organization so we're at the mercy of people's time but um, really great information and it's kind of a way to get concierge consulting on your particular issue or problem now this particular topic is a specialty and stephanie is the um, the knowledgeable one in our group. So we will do our best to find you, connect you up with somebody who has an answer if we don't have it ourselves. And then you're going to take us through all the all the calculations and stuff that is part of the package. Yes. So as I mentioned in the presentation, the appendix has calculations for uh, plant water requirements. So you, we'll take you through how to calculate that. Um, there's some sample calculations, as well as how to calculate the mulch basin volume uh, and uh, search capacity. Again, example calculations here. So um, when you're ready for that, you can dive in. Fantastic, thank you so much. Okay, we are going to send everyone who registered for this class, whether they showed up for it or not, the video um, that we just watched, the, um, it's not a video, the recording of today's event and um, the presentation with all the links in it. So look for that in the next couple of days and we look forward to seeing you at other classes in the future. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Awesome.
Thanks everyone for attending. Okay. Bye. Bye.